Hoorah! Hello, I'm Zach here and welcome back to my channel and today I'm taking on an interesting challenge called the sad drawing using happy colors challenge. I think that that's, that's how you call it. And basically the point of this challenge is to create an illustration that feels sad when you look at it. However, the catch is that your color palette is limited to only using joyful and happy colors. Uh, this challenge is actually the counterpart to a challenge drawler created called the happy drawing using sad colors challenge where he basically did the exact opposite and tried to create a happy illustration but only using sad colors if you guys don't know who drawler is well then you've probably never made it to my live streams <laughs> Ain't the shop is still in the she, she was looking, she was kinda, looking dumb. kinda dumb. We're like delayed, so we're guessing it's insane. Oh yeah, good times, good times. But anyway, uh, he's a good friend of mine and ever since he did his happy drawing using sad colors video, uh, I've had the counterpart challenge on my list of to-do videos and so I figured this time around I'd give it a shot. I have the links to both his challenge video as well as his channel linked below. You guys should definitely go check him out if you haven't already. So the first thing I did uh, that you saw was I was throwing out a lot of different ideas. Uh, for how I was going to make a sad illustration without really thinking about the colors yet and um, So the first idea that came to my mind was to draw someone crying just like a really sad person um, But there was something about that. I just felt was kind of I don't know just like Cheating or something like uh, it's like oh, yeah, okay You draw someone who's like really sad and crying. It's like okay. Yeah, it's a sad drawing Ooh, whatever so I try to scrap that and try to do something else and try to make like um Just like a whole illustration with a whole environment and uh, You know to try and make that whole situation kind of sad and after thumbnailing a few ideas I ended up settling on this um, like little kid from the back who's kneeling and I felt that there was something kind of I don't know like powerful about that pose because you can't see his face um, and I think that uh, you know you you kind of gather how he feels from his environment you know from the way he's grabbing the ground uh, from what he's uh, you know kneeling in front of the the little words on the ground and so forth so it was kind of just like uh, what I was shooting for was something that you kind of have to study for a little moment uh, before you can kind of get it. And I'm being like really careful not to say too much because like I actually know exactly what everything here represents in this illustration. There's kind of like a little story I guess you could say about it because this, uh, my end, the end result was kind of inspired. Uh, by something that I've been writing recently, but I'm not sure if I'll ever actually like release what I'm writing So I, I, I don't know. Also, I kind of want it because I feel like it can be kind of cheating if I explain too much about how Whatever how sad it is or something like that because then it's like oh, yeah I kind of you know injected that sadness into you guys, but it's like I, I want to see what do you guys gather from this illustration? You know, let me know. What, what do you feel everything represents and stuff like that? And does it make you feel sad? Now, when it came to actually drawing this thing, I, I it was actually quite difficult for me to draw this pose for some reason. I ended up having to look up uh, some photo reference of people kneeling because I didn't know how to draw like the feet and stuff from behind. And also that head. As you can see, it was really causing me a lot of trouble because for some reason, like, it kept looking weird when I put the hair on it, so, yeah, but I got through it. Yay. <laughs> when it came to doing the line work, recently, for some reason, I've been really enjoying using, uh, the, the pen tool to do kind of like this really sharp, kind of thick line art. Uh, it kind of started with that uh, primary color challenge video that I did. I'll have a link somewhere um, where I was just like, okay, let me do use the pen tool and I ended up liking it and I ended up starting to really 
use it and really like it which is like so ironic because you go back like i don't know <laughs> like a, a couple months or something ago and i was like oh i hate the pen tool and i only use the pencil tool to do line work and whatever because i just don't like how the pen tool feels um and this has always been the case when it came to digital art i always disliked using the pen tool to do line work even when i felt like i had to do it i always dreaded the process it just always felt so unnatural and weird but for some reason recently i've just kind of grown to like it and i i don't know why it just it just happened so it's like <laughs> welcome to my channel one day i'll say oh i don't use this now i swear by it <laughs> So after that was all done, it was time to move on to the colors. Yay! So after doing a quick Google search, I found the colors. The happy, joyful, amazing colors. Because I was like, wait a minute, like, you know, when it comes to coloring in things, you know, technically there are no happy or sad colors. It's really just how you use them and uh and, and so on right but but when we think of colors in like a general sense like when we think of like oh what's your favorite color and you may say like blue or orange or red or whatever you know it's like you know you may not always like that color in every situation but it's like a color you're drawn to so we're, we're thinking about just basic crayons here what's what's a happy color what's a sad color and so i had to use google to help me with that and i found that um it was pretty much yellow orange green and pink so i i went over to my color wheel and i picked out some vibrant uh, colors of those colors and I put them down on my canvas so that I would have a palette to work with and that's when I realized that this challenge was gonna be hard <laughs> because all those colors are all on the same area on the color wheel I mean I mean look at this it's they're all here except for pink because pink pink is edgy like that and when I paint I, I tend to like use colors from all around the color wheel because uh, I mean, I'd hate to bring up color harmony again, like I know so much about this, but it's just like when the, the different colors, you have that contrast between like cools and warms and stuff like that, it just, it just works so, so, so well, <laughs> you know what I mean? But here, now I was stuck with like this one area on the color wheel, and I was like, how am I gonna color in this whole thing with this? Not to mention, I was really trying to stay away from desaturated versions of those colors, or very dark versions of those colors because I felt that, uh, that when we think of happy colors we think of like vibrant color of the versions of those colors it'd be kind of cheating if I just went and did like a really dark gross looking yellow and be like oh hey it was yellow it's, it's, it's still a happy color but that made like shading and stuff like really difficult because um, I couldn't have like dark colors to do the shading properly and then I also couldn't use complementary colors to to do the shading so it was just like I don't know I felt like it was really hard to get depth within everything I felt like everything was just kind of glazing over into like this one plane of existence I mean, it took everything I had not to, like, just reach for a blue or a purple, you know what I mean, to, to help me. Um, but after a while, I guess you could say, like, I got used to it. Like, I just kind of accepted that this was my fate. And uh, I started working with the colors and I really had to wrap my brain around them and uh, understand the colors. Understand those colors. And after just like messing around with them uh, a bunch, I, I started seeing how they react with each other, how do they look next to each other, and uh, that ended up actually being kind of fun to work with such a limited color palette because, I mean, if you guys know me, you know, I don't usually pick out color palettes. I usually just kind of go with the flow every single time. So this was a really interesting exercise for me to do. And to be honest, one that I'm probably going to continue trying to do once in a while, but not necessarily trying to be like happy or sad, but just like picking out a really limited amount of colors and just trying to, to work with them as a whole. Because the end result of this painting, I thought ended up looking really cool. Like I actually kind of like how it ended up looking um, with just these, these colors that are just so similar with each other. And it just creates this really, I don't know, just like a look that I, like, I don't, I, I tend to not have a lot at a time in my own artwork. And y'all know I love trying out new things and having a, 
new style. But now, when it actually came to the whole thing about this challenge, which was to keep the, the, the overall painting feeling sad, but using these really bright and happy colors, I don't know how I did. I'm gonna have to ask you guys to, to tell me how I did because I, I actually saw that it was it was actually making the whole uh, original line work and sketch actually it was starting to get uplifted by these oranges and yellows and light greens and stuff like that, which is very intriguing. Um, to that how how that really works with our I don't know our our psyche or whatever how certain colors can really just bring out certain moods and these these bright yellows and oranges really did actually I don't know it felt like it made the whole thing feel a bit more peaceful or something like that it seemed like uh, the main color that I mainly used in this illustration was orange I think that there's a lot of orange in this uh, illustration the other colors the yellow pink and uh, greens were really just kind of accented colors and orange is a very like calming and colorful I mean, it's the color of the sunset, so it's like naturally that color always makes it feel calming and I don't know, I guess I was drawn to that color in this situation because this whole situation is kind of, I don't know, melancholy? <laughs> yeah, that's the word. I think this illustration ended up turning out a little bit more melancholy rather than sad, but I don't know. I, I need your guys' opinion on that. Overall though, I'm actually quite happy with how the end result uh, illustration turned out. I, I like how it looks with the... Uh, the analogous, analogous colors. That's the word when you have a painting that doesn't use complementary colors. Um, it, it, yeah, you can look it up. But yeah, so I, I like, I made an illustration that I, I like, but I'm not so sure if it, you know, like completes the challenge, if it defeats the challenge or not. So, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, technically, actually, I do know because I did get the stamp of approval from the guy who made this challenge. So, you know, <laughs> but I'd still like to hear what you guys think. So let me know in the comments. How do you think I did with this challenge? Is it sad? Is it not sad? What do you feel? Tell me your thoughts. I'm Zakira, the psychiatrist. But overall, this was a very interesting and fun to do challenge. So I would definitely recommend uh, if you want to give this challenge a shot to give it a shot or give the other one a shot the, the other way around. I don't know, whatever you want to do, do it. That's just do it. Well, that wraps up this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys found this video interesting or enjoyable in any way. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. I make new videos every week, usually uploading on Sundays. If you want to follow me on social media, all the links to that are in the description box where you can follow me for daily updates. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!